Aloha, shalom, Shabbat shalom. <laughs> We're here for the full moon activation. And I know you guys have been waiting for this reading because the moon has been bright and full, fuller each day. And when it gets to that point where it's just lighting up the night, you know it's time for the activation. So I'm just setting up right now while y'all tune in. As usual, I'm tuning in from the lovely Sedona, Arizona. This is what my little cloth looks like for those of you who are coming for the first time. Welcome to our activation portal. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. We've been doing this for, I don't even know how many years now, five years um, every single week. So we go by the four quarters of the moon cycle. And these activations, for those of you who are new, don't actually have anything to do with the moon other than the fact that we use it as a measurement of time. We also use it as a symbol to reflect back to us what is happening inside of us because as in one, so in all. So the shape of the moon is telling us something and really everything around us has a message if we can tune in, but the moon is a most obvious one that we all can see very clearly, especially when it's full. So let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. I see some people already have begun doing that. Australia is in the house. We have another Arizonian in the house, Tucson, Arizona. What's up? So I got my cards out. I'm going to begin shuffling. So good to see you guys tuning in. Michigan in the house. And feel free to share this video now while we're live. You might want to share it with a family member, a friend, someone who could use this uplifting message. message or maybe you have a favorite Facebook group. If you don't wanna share the live, the recording will be here after. It will also be on YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic. <clears throat> so remember the deck is like you, this whole deck together are the pieces of you together. Okay, I'm actually turning off my internet. I'm gonna go with my data. You guys know I'm not the fanciest girl. <laughs> so I'm just going to turn off my internet and hope this works out. Oregon in the house, Ireland in the house, North Dakota in the house, Florida in the house, New Jersey in the house. We've got lots of people from all over today. So what I was saying was this deck, when all the cards are together, is like the whole you. And each card is a different part of you. Each card represents a different angle of perspective, both within the individual mind as well as the collective mind. So when they're all together, it's whole. This is the whole alliance right here in our hands. Ireland, North Dakota, let's see, let's go. New Jersey, Florida. Where are you guys at? All you new guys tuning in, let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. And I like to see when people say where they're tuning in from, I like to see in my mind's eye the world and that part of the world lighting up. So we're just lighting up all the different parts of the world right now coming together. So as I'm shuffling the different perspectives of the mind, I'm touching them, I'm waking them up, right? Feel, you could, you could imagine it like it is the different neural pathways of the brain lighting up. Just like the world is lighting up as we comment where we're tuning in from. Same thing as we're shuffling. We're lighting up the different parts of the one, the different parts of the whole. More Floridians in the house, more Arizonians in the house, North Carolina in the house. And really, when you feel complete, you're complete. You just have to know. You have to have that relationship with yourself because they're you. We won. Okay. Taking out now the Hebrew deck. A lot of you have been asking me where I got this or how to get one. I made it by hand. I laminated it. I wrote the letters free form, scanned it, all that good stuff. So I'm hoping to have some decks produced for y'all sometime in the future and I'll let you know, I promise I'll let you know when I have them ready. But that's where I, I got them for myself, I made them. <clears throat> and the Hebrew cards work the same way. The letters of the Hebrew alphabet are just like the tarot, same thing. They each represent a different archetypal concept or a different aspect of self. Because we are the archetypes. So thank you in advance to the archetypes, faces of the one. Thank you, every one of you. Thank me, thank we. We are the archetypes. We are one. So giving thanks to that one in advance for the message about to come through. 
And remember, it's the full moon. So this is all about a revelation. Coming to a, a pinnacle within the cycle where we're realizing this is what's been going on. This is the whole picture of what's been going on, fully illuminated. And we have the week ahead of us to just take it in, take in the beauty of that picture that the full moon represents or what it's reflecting in our lives. And then next week will be the final quarter. That's when we really start to integrate all of that information. But you see, if we don't allow this special time to fully take in the picture, we rush past this part of the process and we try integrating information that we didn't even fully presently and wholly receive. So the full moon is not a time to integrate. It's a time to really gaze upon the wholeness of the message that is presenting itself to us right now. Then next week, after we feel we've fully taken that in, we can start to integrate that, make choices based on that information so that we can close up one cycle and prepare for the week after that, which is the new moon, new cycle. Okay, so that's a little bit about full moon activation. And we are ready. Thank you. Thank we, thank one. So beginning with the tarot deck, what is the current focus this week as information comes up? I know a lot of you are talking about Mercury retrograde or, you know, uh, times of transition right now from all the different angles of perspective, all the different astrological systems of understanding. And really everything's always changing every moment. So there's always a, a current focus, a priority focus. What is that right now as we receive the fullness of this picture? That focus is also the challenge and gift. What can we leave behind? What can we start to move out of in order to be present for this focus? And then with the Hebrew cards, as usual, we'll pull an ally of the week. And the ally is the, the most helpful force. These are all our allies, but it's gonna give us the primary ally for this moment in time and space. If we weren't in these bodies having this human experience, you know, we're living in a different dimension outside of time and space, it would be a different story. But because we live in this, you know, this time space reality where there's a, you know, we actually have time even, then we have the ability to pick out who is the priority one in that moment. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay. The current challenge is the devil. Oh, I love this card. I was just talking about the devil card with somebody the other day. Some of my favorite tarot conversations have been around the devil card over the years. So in ancient Egypt, it's known as the black magician. And remember, the first thing you want to do to understand the meaning of any arcanum is look to the opposite of what the card is saying. Then you get the answer, right? Because the equal and opposite force lies hidden within. That's what we always have to seek. When we look at what's there and then seek its opposite, we have the whole picture. We have everything in between. So the black magician would then be the white magician hidden within. You might want to call it the light magician. Maybe you want to call it the angel, whatever you want to call it to, to give it that opposite understanding. But the point is this, we only come to these places to experience negative consequences of our choices so that we can learn and become better than we were before. Mistakes are blessings and lessons if we allow them to be, if we receive them that way. But if we're so busy, like a lot of us are being in fear of this concept, well, then we just stay paralyzed in fear and we never move forward. But right away when we look at this card, we wanna consider the opposite so that it gives us that vantage point so that we don't start sinking into that fear, but we immediately have that, that strong point when we focus on, oh, okay, uh, whatever I'm going through right now that's this is teaching me to be the opposite. I can dig that. That makes me feel a little more empowered to be able to deal with this and to embrace it and to make the most of it, right? So this being the challenge right now at the time of the full moon is saying, wow, we have a great opportunity to allow the light of the full moon to be representative of an inner light that is being shown upon our shadows. This is the time of the cycle where we can capitalize on 
that supportive energy to be able to identify where our faults are, where our self limitations are. For example, if you said to yourself, I'm ready to see where I've been deceiving myself. I'm ready to remove those limitations. The full moon is the best time to do it because it's fully illuminating those shadows. This is the greatest time to be doing it. So this being the current challenge and gift is saying right now, not only do you have the greatest ability to identify and recognize those shadows, but you also have the greatest potential to heal it. If you carry that perspective, that lessons turn to blessings, that mistakes turn to lessons, turn to blessings. Okay. So I want to explain to you the devil from maybe a little bit of a different perspective than you've heard it defined before. Anything that is the devil in our life, and, and it can be very sneaky, so really open up your mind and open up your heart. The devil is anything in our lives that we have created, that we have manifested as a result of our own mental limitations, because everything is the mind. Everything comes from the mind. So what happens is we develop certain habits over time or certain beliefs that are just not good for us, not just us meaning the single us, but the collective us most importantly, right? Going all the way there. Because something that's good for you is not necessarily good for the one, right? So we develop these habits of thought, of behavior that, or speech that are not good for us. And what happens is we start to deceive ourselves through our own self observations because we become a false example. We're not being who we truly are are a reflection of the essence of our purity and our true light. Instead, we become something else. And through even our unconscious or subconscious self observations, we begin to redefine our experience, which then even deeper on a subconscious level redefines our definitions of the world and each other and the elements themselves. So then what happens is subconsciously we have these perverted, twisted definitions of the elements, ourselves and the world. And then we, as long as we choose to stay in that place, we dig ourselves deeper into a hole and we begin to experience more discomfort more suffering, more strife, more challenges in our lives than we really have to. Because now we have to, because we've created the necessity to be able to learn those lessons. Because what we're telling the universe is, I haven't learned yet, so make it hard for me. But we don't have to do that. The more we're aware of these concepts, the more we can be empowered to stay present and consciously participate in our realities rather than allowing all this to happen on a subconscious level where one thing leads to the next. We start to pervert our inner beliefs and then that projects into our reality as the devil. We trap ourselves because we forget who we really are. We forget the true definition of the elements. And so we create a limitation in our reality as a reflection of that manipulation. And I want to say self manipulation because there is only one self. Everything is one. Everything is one self. And so there's no other who is manipulating you. When you prepare yourself with this awareness, you don't allow for others to manipulate you. And the other is just another you. Okay, so where in your life is there something that's keeping you from reaching that next level of growth? And you might feel like, oh, I don't even know where to start. What is that next level of growth? Let's simplify. It's always about the virtues and walking a virtuous path. All of our lessons come down to that, those same virtues, those original principles of truth of which we are made. So if there's anything in your life right now that's keeping you from being honest with yourself, with any part of yourself, which includes, includes every other being, which includes the world, if there's something keeping you from being honest, that's where you need to look. If there's something in your life that is keeping you, and these, again, these are excuses because there's nothing keeping us from doing this but ourselves. But you gotta start somewhere. So you wanna look at your reality and your relationships and all of the situations and projects you're invested in and ask yourself, 
where do I feel like I can't be honest? Where do I feel like I can't be supportive and compassionate? Where, where do I feel like I can't be fair in this life experience? That's where the work begins. Because if you can't be those virtues, you're not being yourself. Because our highest self, all of us, because we're all part of one highest self, is that light. <laughs> is that light? Um, I love that. <laughs> I'm a crown. But that light, that original, all virtuous light of compassion that some of you call God or universe, source, creator, Hashem, Allah, whatever you call it, that original source is the all virtuous light. And when it fragmented, right, and became the rainbow in this whole world we see around us, it became all of the other virtues. So we are the light of the virtues, which are all lights of the one original light of the all virtuous light of compassion. So if there's anything in your experience right now that you feel is keeping you, limiting you from being that light and any of its parts, any of its parts, any of the virtues, it's in the way of your growth. And no matter how uncomfortable it is to stop it or get rid of it or say no to it or set a boundary, cancel a path that you've been on and take a turn, right? Because remember 15, 16 is the tower. It's about a turn of events, time to initiate so it doesn't, the rug doesn't get pulled out from under you. If there's anything that's keeping you from walking that higher path right now, it's keeping you from being your true self. It can't, I don't care what you say about, oh, but it feels so good. Oh, but it's gonna bring me this temporary satisfaction over this. Nothing is gonna bring you the feeling that you get when you're walking a virtuous path, like embodying the virtues themselves. Nothing is gonna bring you to that level of pleasure like the virtues do. So we deceive ourselves and we tell ourselves that we want to stay here in this comfortable place. We're even willing to look past all the ways in which it's causing suffering, not only in our world, but in our shared world. We're willing to look past all that because it feels so good. Because that's temptation for you. But nothing feels as good through and through in every dimension, immediately and in the long term, as walking the virtuous path as being that light, embodying that light and shining that light of who you, we truly are, that light of the one. There is nothing. So whatever it is, if it's keeping you from being that, it's time to stop it. Remember, 16 comes next, the tower. It's gonna happen. Why are you gonna waste your time? Some people will wait their whole lives and maybe lifetimes, right? Making excuses for those habits, even though it's keeping them from their growth. But why, why wait when you know the inevitable is coming, that the tower has to fall? Doesn't matter how many excuses or justifications you make, the tower will have to fall. Whatever is not sustainable, which means whatever is not of that highest light because the only thing that lasts forever is that light. So if what you're working on is not contributing to that light that is eternal, that is beyond this body and this material dimension, it's gonna fall eventually. So know that here and now, ask yourself, what in my life is temporary? What have, I, what have I been giving my energy to in this life that is just not worth it, that is just temporary anyway? And how can I make even my material experience a ritual to feed that light that is forever? So what I mean by that is instead of giving into bad habits and giving your energy to these you know, bad ways of thinking, speaking, acting, ask yourself, how can I make some changes in my life to treat my relationships and all the situations I'm invested in as opportunities to be more virtuous, to be more honest, to be more vulnerable, to be more caring, to be of service. Because what I do when I do those things, when I embody that light is, wow, so powerful. It's the whole reason we came here. Because when I do that, I am ensuring that that light is going to continue on, that I'm feeding something that is eternal. And I will instantly feel activated and full of purpose and empowered by having those virtuous thoughts, by, by speaking those words of virtue, by doing acts of kindness, goodness, service. And the more we do that, the more our life, and not just our life, but our shared collective life will flourish. 
I also want to point something out because I said temptation, right? When you see the devil, you think temptation, right? Look, the devil's lighting his tail on fire, right? A couple things I want to say about that. Whenever you have a double digit card in the tarot, you always want to reduce it to a single digit to find the keynote of that theme because they're connected. This is the evolution of the keynote, okay? So when you reduce 15, you get a six. One, five, one plus five, six. The six card in the tarot, Arcanum six, is the lovers, AKA the two paths. And it depicts, it actually looks really similar if you hold them up side to side. There are a lot of similarities. It shows, however, an archangel. It shows the archangel Raphael. It shows male and female. You can call them Adam and Eve because it's showing a scene of Genesis from the Bible, Torah, and it's showing the tree of knowledge and the tree of life in the background. It's even showing behind Adam, behind the man, the tree is on fire. So hold them up if you have your deck, you guys. You'll see the similarities. And card six, the lovers, AKA the two paths, is all about choice and duality, making choices in a world of duality, accessing our free will to hopefully make the best choices. And then the devil is the result of those choices. It's the evolution of those choices. And there are inevitably going to be lessons with every choice that we make. So it doesn't have to be scary. It's just saying like, okay, now we're, we've manifested the result of the choices, time to make new decisions to call in new experiences. That's all, so that we can keep growing. In fact, each tarot card is associated with a different part of the alchemical process, the creative process. And this card is associated with the heat being turned up in the alchemical furnace. Time to learn what we came here to learn. Time to speed the process up here. Time to learn. Let's learn from our choices. Let's not pity ourselves or victimize ourselves because now we're sitting in the results of our choices, our karma, whatever that looks like, but let's refine, let's realize, let's reconnect to our original decisions and understand how we got here. Let's connect our prayers to our manifestations. Let's accept our lessons, turn them into blessings and do it now. Let's not wait for the tower to fall. Let's know that no one pulls the rug out from under us. If there's only one self. So let's pull the rug out from under ourselves right now. Let us not fear that change of events that is inevitable and must take place, but let us accept it and embrace it as our highest good and initiate that now. Let's go. Let's go. Put the fire on our own tail. Put the fire on our own butt. Don't wait around for someone else to do it. That's not honorable. That's not why we came here. We came here to access our free will. So for example, if some of you are feeling more on the challenging end of this and you feel like you're shit, like I made some bad choices. Oh my God, how did I get here? Don't pity yourself. Understand how your free will and your decisions brought you here. Accept the circumstances and accept that at least it was your free will this whole time. There's a silver lining. You had the power all along because you're a child of the one. You're connected to that one infinite source. So now with that knowledge, no matter where, no matter what the consequences are that you're sitting in right now, you have the power in your hands and in your heart. Instead of having self pity and getting stuck now in your karma, take responsibility, take accountability, fire up that free will and make better choices. Okay. Look at the ways in which you've fallen off the path. Know you have the power to get right back on. Also know this, the choices you make in bravery right now, with courage, the choices that you make to say no, to choose a new path, to do what's right, despite the discomfort, especially the more discomfort, the better. Those choices you make to change right now, that's brave, it takes a lot of courage, and it's powerful, and you will be doubly rewarded at this time. Your efforts will be matched by the universe if you do this work. Now is the time. Okay, and remember, it could be sneaky for some of us. It, you know, we're on the more challenging end. For some of us, we're more on the gift end. And so that means for some of us, we're really struggling to let go of these comfortable places that we're in that are doing nothing for us. And for some of us, we're feeling like, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Maybe it's a little bit easier to make those changes. Maybe you have more support around you, encouraging you to make those changes. So think about it. If you're on the more challenging end, how can you get yourself that support that you need to make this time a little easier, to make this time a little great, more graceful? The first thing I want to share is 
the number one thing I want to share is remember to connect to the elements, the magic of the elementals. You are made of the elements. Don't forget the magician at the very beginning. You are still that. That's still one of your allies, a part of you that you always walk with. And so many of us forget and we overcomplicate the process. If you are not first asked, if you're any magical endeavor you're beginning, any manifestation, any prayer you have, if you are not first addressing the the world of elements, the four elements, you're already making it harder for yourself. So I just want to remind you, wherever you're at with this theme right now, whether you feel like it's more challenging or it's a little easier for you, connect to the elements, remember that you are one with those forces, and ask them for the support. Just ask. It doesn't have to feel silly. It's actually very scientific. It's actually very logical. So get rid of whatever shame you've cultivated over the years telling you that it's not okay to do this or that it feels silly. Okay, I'm not saying shout it out on the rooftops. You can do it in, quietly in a room, whatever feels right for you. But connect to the elements and ask, hey, I know I'm made of you. You're everything. Help me right now. It's hard to get out of these habits, these bad ways. It's hard to end this relationship. It's hard to end this job because of my attachments to money or sex or whatever the temptation is. But I'm asking you to help me to pave the way. And when you do that, you're off to a powerful start. Okay. So what we can leave behind to better focus on this task of the devil right now. Ten of Pentacles. Whew, the message is very clear here. Ten of Pentacles is all about, like, it's an ending and a new beginning, first of all, because it's ten. And it's about manifesting the fullness of your prosperity, not just for yourself, but hopefully you're including a vision of everyone around you. Hopefully the whole world. Hopefully the whole one. It's about manifesting that. And it's, it's Pentacles, so it's the suit of mind to matter. Mind to manifestation, thoughts to things. We can put to rest this go-getter attitude right now, this really check in with yourself where you've been walking in lack consciousness, where you feel like I just need to go, go, go. Look at where you may have been missing opportunities on the virtuous path, because that's the most important thing. Where have you maybe got a little sidetracked and maybe your devil has to do with seeking more? more, more out of this person, more from that person, more from this relationship. I want more from a job. I want more money. And then we miss out on the smaller opportunities in between those moments that are actually the more profound, the most profound ones. Okay. So how can we shift from that? One way that you can work with the energy to begin to move toward this is by, and this is guaranteed to work, is if you take that motivation to want more, reconnect to the collective of which you are a part and want more for that collective. You can immediately shift your life experience when you do this. When you recognize where you've been wanting to serve self and not self. If you can take that motivation you have for prosperity right now and, and direct it straight toward the collective. So whatever it is you've been trying to manifest, ask yourself, is this for the one? or not. If it's not, change your goal because your 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 pursuit is futile. Period. But if it is for the one, how can you affirm that? How can you speak that? How can you be more intentional? How can you say instead of, "Hey universe, I want this thing." Say, "Hey universe, elementals, help me out. I would really love I see myself in manifesting this for us because it's going to help us, the one, the world in 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 this way or that way." Connect what you're trying to manifest to the one, which immediately aligns your heart with the heart of nature and the cosmos. It immediately puts you on that virtuous path because you're, you're thinking of the one, you're not just thinking of yourself. When magic is used for self, for the smaller self, it's selfish and it doesn't work and you, you get cut off from that source of power ultimately. But when you direct your manifestations and your desires for the will of the one, then you are plugged in, baby. You're plugged into that source. You are activated as much as you possibly could be. And that's where we want to be, ultimately. That's, where, that's the only place we all want to be all the time. So one way you could start to move out of that energy of go, go, go and manifesting for the self is to say, I want that prosperity for the one. Get into that space. Get into that space. 
And if you do, you will be on the virtuous path and in the proper space, vibrationally, energetically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, you'll be in the proper frequency to do this work. Because if you're in that selfless service space, you cannot resonate with the negative thoughts, words, or actions that have been going on in your life. You, you can't, it's impossible. But if you're self-serving and you just got your eye on the prize and the money and the temporary prosperity, the temporary prosperity only, oh, you're very well likely to be stuck in that place even more to dig yourself in even deeper. So it's like, hey, take a rest. I'm trying to do all these things for just yourself or even just for one person, how can you stretch your mind and stretch your heart to be intending on manifesting prosperity, which is wellness, which is health, which ultimately is immortality for the one, for the whole. So whatever your small goals are right now, it's being highlighted that, hey, what we have to do is make those goals bigger, make those goals for the one and begin to act on those goals through the everyday mundane details of our lives. Okay, so we want to go all the way from, I want to make some money and, and be prosperous, you know, this week, this week, I want to get, you know, a lot of tips at my job, right? We want to go from like that to whatever I manifest this week, let it be for the one, let it be a blessing to this world, let it bring us closer to heaven on earth. Wow, that seems like a tall order, right? Not really. You can bring heaven to earth right here, right now by being yourself. And what does that mean? By being the light. And what does that mean? By embodying any of the virtues because they're all fragments of that one all virtuous light of compassion. So don't tell me you don't know how to bring heaven to earth right now or that's too hard. Not true. You can do it right here, right now. And you don't have to stop, you know, things that aren't hurting anyone if, if you have a job if you have a desk job that doesn't mean you're not serving the one are you able to be a virtuous person at that desk good job you're bringing heaven to earth it's not some big show when we all do it together yeah it starts to be a big show it starts to be amazing we start to see the world that we've been working so hard to manifest for lifetimes but on a personal individual level it doesn't have to be anything crazy it just means being your true self which means being the light of the virtues that's it so you see how if we can transform that energy of go-getter for myself into go-getter for the collective with the highest goal of bringing that light into the world, then no doubt we'll ace this current challenge. We'll blast through those limitations. We'll let that tower fall right here, right now because we are so ready for it because we're resting in that space of knowing that when I am that light, an embodiment of that light, and I have the mission of manifesting prosperity in the image of that light, then I don't care about those stupid habits or places that yesterday were so comfortable and tempting because this is so much more fulfilling to be working to manifest goodness and light in this world. Oh, it feels so good. Forget it. We'll forget about all this crap that we've been feeding into. And the ally of the week, we have the Vav. And remember, it's flipped on the camera. So you want to Google it to get the proper view of the letter. So you just want to type in Google or whatever your search engine, Hebrew letter Vav, V-A-V, -V, Vav. It's the sixth letter of the Aleph Bet, and it represents a couple of things. First, I'll start off with this. The Vav represents the spine. It represents the Kundalini, the Shekinah, the life force that we contain. It also represents the middle between two worlds. It's the connecting factor, just like your spine is connecting your spirit to your body. You can see it like this, okay? I also wanted to let you guys know it's connected to Arcanum six in the tarot. So it's connected to the lover's card, AKA the two paths, which did we not just say, that's the hidden keynote of the devil card. 15, one plus five is six, Vav. It's connected to the lovers, AKA the two paths. So it's all about 
our choices and our free will, just like card six says, right? But the Hebrew opens up a door. It opens, as it always does, it opens up your mind and your heart to the bigger picture, to the deeper initiation that the tarot is trying to convey. So while card six, which it's associated with, tells us it's about free will and choices, when we connect it to this idea that Vav is this connecting factor, right? Vav also represents a tent peg or a nail that secures, it binds the above and below. It, it combines, the, it, it binds the two to the one, okay? Um, so when you consider that meaning, along with the meaning of card six in the tarot, the whole picture tells us that yes, we have free will, we have decisions to make, may we make them, make those decisions in thought, speech, and action in a way that's going to secure those worlds of above and below together, in a way that's going to bring heaven and earth together. Okay, so while card six hints at, hey, you know, it has this whole picture of Genesis, it hints at your free will, your ability to make decisions. Well, the results of those decisions are gonna be highly reflecting, they're gonna be reflective of our ability to make the right choices, the ones that are gonna further secure heaven and earth, further merge the two back into the one, which also means further merging your, ba your balance of logic and intuition together. It means supporting that balance of your own body and spirit, you know, mind and body, merging your masculine and feminine, merging your logic and intuition to find balance the Vav is the one that helps remind us, you don't just have free will. You, you have it, but for what? It tells you the purpose. You have free will so that you could be the bridge, so that you can be the connecting factor, so that you can secure that sacred, holy, alchemical marriage that's taking place with, around us and within us always, at all times. This whole reality is manifested because of the forces of polarity vibrating in opposition, like a marriage, a sacred union. And we're here to protect that, to honor that, to be aware of that, first of all, to even be aware of it. So many are unaware. To be aware of that, to protect it, to honor it, to be space holders for that. Yes, we have free will because we were not created to be blind, blindly obedient robots, right? You don't want to tell someone to love you so that they'll love you. You want them to love you, right? Same thing with our creator, with the universe. We have free will so that we will hopefully choose to make the right decisions. And if we don't, we have an infinite amount of time to get there. It doesn't mean that there aren't going to be consequences in this world. It's just that there is no such thing as time. There is only infinity, right? That's the irony. But that's the thing. When you put this Vav together with Arcanum 6, you see that we have to make the right choices. Our free will is given to us at birth, yet... We have to ask, and Kabbalah tells you, we have to ask why. Kabbalah is all about the why of everything. Why are we here? Why am I who I am? Why was I born with free will? What am I supposed to do with that? So when we remember our sacred purpose as that vav, that, that spine, the kundalini, the connecting factor, a fun fact, Adam was created on the sixth day in the Torah or the Bible, the Hebrew Bible, right? Sixth day, the spine, Man was created. He's the connecting factor. He, she, you, me, we. We are the connecting factor between the worlds of above and below. It's all merging within us. So the Vav as our ally is telling us as we move through this challenge of the week, ask, how have we been using our free will in that way or not in that way? And how can we identify the situations that we're in, the circumstances of our lives right now, as being a result of the way that we've used our free will up until this point. And how can we take accountability for that? And how can we, instead of becoming stuck, just remember who we are and get back on the path and begin making choices in thought, speech, and action that are going to further secure those worlds of above and below, that are going to further support the merging of those forces of polarity within us. We all want balance. We all wanna feel balance within. We all wanna see a, a world of harmony without as a result. Well, if you want that, you have to remember the vav, your spine, your kundalini, your life force, your shekinah, your spirit that is inside of you. You have to wanna to merge with that. So all of our thoughts, words, and actions should support that merging within and all around. 
wherever we're stuck right now is just an example of how we've been abusing that free will and just not using it appropriately. So just start now, start now. What do you have to lose? Only all the negativity and suffering and disease in your life. That's what you have to lose. So reconnect to your spine, to that staff of wisdom within you. Let it remind you of your purpose. The Vav is our ally of the week. It will help us to do this. Okay. Another interesting um, connection is that the devil can be seen as like a, like a staff or a supportive force because it's, it does support, you know, although it can hurt us and leave us temporarily with a limp, it's actually also the staff that holds us up and carries through the rest of the way because our challenges, if we allow them, become our support along the path. They become our wisdom along the way. So when you think of your spine and you think of a staff, think of whatever is in your life right now that is the devil is, is, is just going to further add to that as soon as you can come back to remembrance of the truth of who you are and why we're here. Devil will only support. So you can choose to victimize yourself right now, or you could say, oh, I see how the, this was all only to bring me back to myself stronger than ever before, to give me the wisdom that I need to keep going. Okay, so remember the Vav, the peg, the tent peg, the nail teaches us we are here to secure those worlds. We're here to be a vessel, a space holder for the unification of those worlds. Whatever we're doing right now that's not allowing that is also not allowing that, allowing us to be ourselves, to be embodying the light of who we truly are. So when we can move out of this desire to manifest for the small self alone, and we can redirect our thoughts, words, and actions to want to manifest prosperity for the collective, for the whole, which means health, wealth, longevity, for the whole it will inevitably put us in a space that does not resonate with this. That tower will fall, 15, 16, tower will fall, 17, we'll return to the light of who we truly are. Whew. It's awesome, and I'm just looking at the play of numbers and you have the 15, the 10, and the six, right? So. You have 15 and you have 10 and 6. When you add that together, it's 16. It's giving us a hint at our progression. We're going to move from the devil to the tower. So how can you anticipate that now? How can you see a little bit into the future? Knowing it's not created yet. We're creating it here and now with all of the choices that we make. Choices, free will. But how can you be honest with yourself and ask, what is that tower going to look like when it falls? And instead of giving into thoughts of fear, accept it know that it's inevitable it has to happen and start sinking into that vision start leaning into that vision really see it and feel it and connect your knowing your awareness that is for that it is for the highest good for that tower to fall right here right now balance the scales okay the scales are like this the, the side of fear is heavier oh god it's even on, an, on a subconscious level you may have been afraid of this inevitable shift but let's eliminate that fear by inserting the awareness and consistently carrying the awareness that it has to happen. So I'm gonna see it right now. And while I'm seeing it, I'm gonna hold that awareness that it is for the highest good. Thank you guys for joining for this full moon activation. Oh, I loved it and I'm loving it. And, and I always have to integrate afterward because I'm in this process right now, you know. So I'm looking forward to that and doing this work alongside all of you to look at how this is manifesting in my own life. Because man, some of you message me after the readings and you say, that was for me. I felt like you're talking to me. Guess what? Same. I'm talking to myself. There really is only one. I know that, I believe that, I see that, I receive that. So I too feel like this reading is just for me. I'm feeling like all of you are feeling right now. If you really enjoyed this reading, if you've been coming to these activations, please consider leaving me a review on my Facebook, facebook.com slash Royal Path Tarot. There's a section where you can review and leave a number of stars for your review. Uh, if you've been reading my book and you wanna review my book, 
thank you so much, books one and two, whichever you're into right now. Please review it. Let me know your thoughts. You can send the review to me in a private message or in an email, info at royalpathtarot.com, or you can share the review on Amazon if you'd like. These are my books, Royal Path one and two. If you've never seen them before, please reach out and ask me if you have any questions. The first one is on the major arcanum of the tarot. It includes the proper Hebrew letter correlations not the manipulated version that you find in almost every tarot book today. It also includes personal questions that you want to ask yourself when you're at any particular part of the story or if you do a reading for yourself, for example, or even if you don't do a reading and you just, you're identifying with a certain card, there are questions that go with that archetype to get yourself more deeply into the frequency of the higher aspects of that archetype. And then book two is on the minor arcanum, so the rest of the deck, as well as the elemental suits. I give a new way of looking at the elementals beyond manipulation. So let me know if you're interested in either of these. Private message me, email me, reach out. I am booking one-on-one -on -one readings right now. So if you haven't heard back from me, just give me a gentle reminder. Things have been a little busy. Um, and if you've been wanting to get a reading, now is the time. If you have a friend with a birthday coming up or the holidays are coming up and you want to give a reading, you know, we have the high holy days uh, in the Jewish faith coming up. If you want to give the gift of a reading to somebody, it truly is the gift that keeps on giving. It's so empowering and they walk away with tools that are going to serve them for literally forever because these archetypal themes are timelessly and multidimensionally applicable. So they make great gifts. Reach out if you have any questions about that. I also have a tarot video course online. Each class is an hour to 90 minutes long, and there's a class on each of the major Arcanum cards. So reach out if you're interested in that. And then the last thing is I've got two private groups on Facebook. One is called the Archetypal Alliance. Feel free to join us there. The other one is called Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T Crew. You can find them on my page here on Facebook, Royal Path Tarot. They're private groups. Feel free to join. Um, in Shabbat Crew, we share about Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah. It's for anyone. And my passion in that group is to convey how Torah and Tarot really are one, but where the Tarot is more about the timeless messages, the Torah takes those timeless messages and makes them applicable to this time-space reality that we're living in, to, to this human experience. So the Torah holds keys just just like the tarot does. They're literally one. Okay, so it's based on the cycles and seasons of nature, just like the tarot. So let me know if you're interested, reach out with any questions. Thank you guys so much for being on this journey with me, with each other. Many blessings to you as you move through this part of the process and each part of it. I'll see you next week for the final quarter and we will wrap it up. Peace.